There was a mega hit TV show. Mega hit TV show on MTV. I don't know if it's still on or not. Called The Real World. The Real World. And that's the, the title of the message that God has given me today to preach to the whole world. We're going to talk about The Real World. MTV, music television. Music is important to so many of you. On TikTok, especially music and dancing and rap, hip hop, rock and roll, dance music, country western. Your life revolves around your music. You follow stars and superstars and celebrities of music. You can't live without your music. You have your iTunes. You have your earbuds in your ears. You have your soundtrack. And, and you love your, the artist. You worship the artist. You praise the artist. And, and, and your life literally revolves around your music. And you upload videos where you're lip syncing to popular music. And you're twerking and you're dancing and shaking your you-know-what to popular music. Well, I grew up in what is called the MTV generation. The MTV generation, music television. And that show, The Real World, was a big time hit. I don't know if it's still on. But it did not reflect the real world. I want you to understand as we begin today, tonight, tomorrow, yesterday, whenever you're watching me, people watch at different times. I want you to understand, number one today, reality television is not real. Amen. It doesn't take a rocket scientist, amen, to figure that out. It doesn't take a degree from Harvard or Yale or Duke or Princeton or Stanford to figure that out. That reality TV is not real. As a matter of fact, there is nothing real at all about reality television. I get upset when I talk to people and their whole life revolves around television, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, you know, you keep ABC, CBS, NBC, Fox, Fox News, CNN, and their whole life revolves around Netflix. Their whole life is this show and that show. Their whole life is their television. And they talk to me about reality shows. Did you see this reality show? No, I didn't. Did you see the game show? Who wants to be a millionaire? I said, no, I don't want to be a millionaire. They said, why don't you want to be a millionaire, Brother Mike? I said, because millionaires go to hell. Billionaires go to hell. Come on, do you really want me to get on my hind legs? Ah, my last name is Dial. Do you want me? To, do you want Dial to get on a soapbox and start preaching? No, I don't want to be a millionaire. I don't want to be a billionaire. I wouldn't trade places with Donald Trump if I had the chance or Buffett, or Zuckerberg, or Cook, or Bezos, or Musk. I wouldn't trade places with them. Why? Because their future is the fires of eternal, everlasting, burning hell. But my future is the gates, the pearly gates. My future is a crystal sea. My future is walking on streets of gold in a mansion on high. Why? Because I chose not to get my reward down here, but I chose to get my reward in glory. How about you? I got all these. Shows on TV like Dancing with the Stars. No. The only one, the only star you ought to dance with is the one who hung the stars. Hallelujah. And the one, hallelujah, 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 who gave every star a name. The Lord God Almighty, the creator and the possessor of heaven and earth. Somebody says, did you see the voice, Brother Mike? I said, no. I didn't see the voice. The only voice I want to hear is the still small voice of Almighty God whispering in my ear, but you can't hear it because your electronic noise drowns out the voice of Almighty God. Somebody said, did you see America's Got Talent? No. 
Because I don't care about that nonsense and that foolishness. What I care about is not, does America have talent? I care about, does America have truth? Does America have truth? Does America have truth? Does America have the truth? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by me. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. If America wants to stay free and remain the land of the free and the home of the brave, America needs to come back to the truth of the word of Almighty God. That is the only way. The freedoms of America will be preserved. Game shows. Competition shows. Did you see Big Brother? No. The only big brother that matters is the Lord Jesus Christ. And we could go on and on and on. It's not real. It's not real. It's not real. It's not real. It's fantasy. It's fiction. It's fables. It's fairy tales. It's not real. You need to get real. Hashtag. Hashtag. Get real. Hashtag. Hashtag. Be real. Hashtag. Get a life. Hashtag. Get a wife. Hashtag. Get saved. I told you music was very important at one point in my life. I'm, I'm not going to deny that. Man, I used to love country western music. I was raised on. I was raised in a small town called Clewis in Florida, and George Jones and Mel Tillis and Charlie Pride, Charlie Daniels, Dolly Parton, Loretta Lynn, Hank Williams Jr., George Strait, Alan Jackson. Come on now. Twin fiddles and a steel guitar. When I hear twin fiddles and a steel guitar, you listen to the sound of the American heart. Opera music on a Saturday night. Amen, George Strait. But you know, when I got saved, the Lord had to deal with me. And the Lord said, that music glorifies drinking. It glorifies cheating. It glorifies lying. And it glorifies living for the devil. Same with rock and roll. Same with hip-hop, it glorifies violence, it glorifies drugs, it, it makes you worship the singer, it makes you dress worldly, talk worldly, sing worldly, dance worldly, suggestively, and you know what God said? You know what God said? God, take, God said, take your music, take your record collection, take it and burn it, and burn it, and burn it, and throw it away. Because I had to be separated. I had to be sanctified. I had to be cleansed. True repentance had to start with the house of God. I had to cleanse the temple. And I had to get away from worldly television. And worldly music. And worldly dancing. And worldly everything. And come to the word of Almighty God. It's either worldliness or it is the word of Almighty God. I was... Ten and a half years old, I'll never forget it as long as I live. I'll never forget it as long as I live. I was ten and a half years old. These things belong to my dad. My dad is the world's biggest Elvis fan. He raised me on Elvis Presley, the so-called king of rock and roll. But how many of you know there's only one king, and his name isn't Elvis? His name is Jesus Christ. But I was raised on Elvis. I know just about every Elvis record. I know just about every Elvis record that has ever been recorded that he ever sang. I never forget I was 10 and a half years old in August of 1977 when at 42 years of age, Elvis Presley died. Elvis Presley died on the toilet. The king died literally on his throne. Elvis died, a young man riddled by prescription drug abuse, obese, 
gluttony, a, a shadow of what he was. Elvis died. Ladies and gentlemen, Prince is another example. And we can go right on down the line and we can list Jim Morrison. Come on, baby, light my, come on, baby, light my, come on, baby, light my fire. His fire has been lit today in eternal hell. And we, we can list one after another young men struck down in their 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s who had the world as their oyster, but now are dead. And now they are leading the hellfire choir in everlasting hell. And the one song, you know the one song that Elvis and all of them are singing right now? It's a share song. Share still with us. But they're all doing a share song. You know what they're doing? If I could turn back time, if I could find a way to take back those words that hurt you and you say if I could reach the stars I'd give them all to you but you know ladies and gentlemen you can't turn back time handele man talabasata ikurian dalabasata the Lord says turn to me here's the interpretation turn to me while there is time turn to me yay while you have time turn to me says God. Because you can't turn back time. And in hell, time is only a concept. And in hell, forever is a very long time. So I was raised on country music. And we loved Alan Jackson. And Alan's one of his biggest hits, and it applies to the title of the message today. And it went, I can't, I can't sing. Alan could sing. I wish Alan was here and could, could sing it for us live. But Alan would say, Here in the real world, it's not that easy at all Cause the boy don't always get the girl Here in the real world Now sing it with me Here in the real world That's, that's what I want to share with you today That's what I want to relate to you today I don't want to talk about the unreal world I don't want to talk about the internet and apps and websites. Uh, virtual anything is real nothing. I don't want to talk about fantasy land. I don't want to talk about all of that. I don't want to talk about social media. I want to talk about the real world. A real hot hell. A real heaven. Real sin. Real life and death issues. Let's get real. Let's get real. And let's talk about the real world. If you have your Bible today, <laughs> open with me to Mark Chapter 11, and I want you to notice beginning with verse 12. And this is a little bit different direction than I had prayed and prepared to go in. I was going to preach from Mark 11, and we're going to get to verses 22 to 26. That's my text, but as I was praying and preparing for this message, the Spirit said, you better start at verse 12. And how many of you know we're going to follow the leading and the guiding of the Holy Ghost. Amen? I'm not in charge here. Mike is not Lord. This is not a TV show we are producing. I don't have a director and a producer and a script. I'm not performing and I'm not entertaining and we don't rehearse. Glory to God, this is church. I said this is church. This is church. Hallelujah to the Lamb of Almighty God. This is church. It's TikTok church. It's Facebook church. It's Twitter church. It's Instagram church. It's church. And in this church, Jesus is the head of the church. It's not the Mike Dahl show. This is not the Mike Dahl ministry. This is Jesus. And he wants us to preach from verse 12. So Mark 11, verse 12. You need to forget about Mark Zuckerberg, amen, and find the gospel of Mark. Are you listening to me? You didn't forget about Luke Skywalker and find the gospel, the gospel of Luke. Today, Mark, 
verse 12, 11, verse 12. On the morrow when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. Jesus was a human. He was God, but he also became man. And as a man, he hungered, he thirsted, he was tempted in all points like we were. He was a fully 100% man. And he saw a fig tree. Now, a fig tree in the Bible is always symbolic of the nation of Israel and or extending into the New Testament, the church. He saw a fig tree. Jesus said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. He saw a fig tree afar off having leaves. He came, if happily he might find anything thereon, and when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. He found nothing but leaves. For the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No, he curses it. No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. He, he, he saw, he found nothing but leaves. And I want you to notice in this context, look at verse 15. And then look what happens in verse 15. And they came to Jerusalem, and Jesus went into the temple, cleansing the temple. He went into the church. He went into the house of God. He went into the temple of God. And what happened? He began to cast out them that sold and bought, buying and selling in the temple, and he overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them who sold ducks. And he wouldn't allow that any man should carry any vessel to the temple, and he taught and he said to him, and he wasn't whispering. Listen, he wasn't whispering. He was having a rant. He was having a rage. He was flying into a rant. And he said at the top of his voice, it is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer for all the nations. But you, religious leaders of Israel, you, religious right, you, fundamentalists, you, evangelicals, have made it a den of thieves. He took the furniture. Jesus was not a twink. Jesus was not a little five foot six, 120 pound weakling with biceps the size of my, my wrist. No. Jesus was a dude. Jesus was a carpenter's son. And big Jesus, he took the tables. He took the tables of the money changers. He took the tables of the money changers. And the Bible said he overthrew them. He threw it. He took the chairs. He took the chairs. He took the chairs. People tell me all the time, they say, Oh, Brother Mike, Jesus didn't preach like you do. Oh, he was meek. He was mild. He didn't raise his voice. He didn't shout. He didn't thunder his voice as a trumpet. He didn't throw the furniture. He didn't go to rants. He didn't judge. Oh, yes, he did. Dude, you've never read the book. Brondalavaki. You've never read the book. God says, you have never read my book. God says, open the book again and take the religious blinders off your eyes and read the book again. Dad, he overthrew the tables of the money. He doesn't approve of the prosperity gospel, of the purpose gospel, of the politics gospel, of buying and selling, of preachers selling books, of preachers selling books, of preachers selling books and records and commentaries and begging for money and signing autographs. And selling shoes and selling a brand. God says, forget about your brand and come back to the Bible. Forget about your brand, mega church, and come back to the blood. And the broken body of Jesus Christ. And he took the chairs, he took the furniture, and he threw it. And he threw it. And he threw it. Brunjalavakata Bahasta. You see, when these people say, oh, Brother Mike, Jesus was not like you. They're wrong. They don't know Jesus. They wouldn't know the real Jesus if he walked in, tapped them on the shoulder, and said, I'm Jesus. 
they wouldn't know him. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 11, he says, there's another spirit, another gospel, and another Jesus. And that's what we have today. We have the Jesus myth. We have an impersonation, someone impersonating and doing an imitation of Jesus. We have fallen angels coming in and acting like Jesus. We have evil spirits, demon spirits, acting like they're the Holy Spirit, and they are deceiving, and they are deluding the people. The Jesus, the real Jesus, I'm talking about the real Jesus, is the one you read about in Matthew, in Mark, in Luke, and in John. We need to come back to the Jesus of the Bible, to the Jesus of the blood, and to the Jesus who gave his broken body on the cross uh, to save you. The Jesus of the Bible saw the fig tree and he saw nothing but leaves. Remember in Genesis the sin nature, the fall of man, original sin. And Adam and Eve knew they were naked so they hewn fig leaves. Fig leaves. Fig leaves are symbolic of organized religion. I don't respect any organized religion. Because God's not a respecter of persons. I don't respect your religion and you need to reject your religion and accept a relationship with God. Fig leaves are typical of organized religion. And they had the fig leaves on, but God didn't recognize it. And God came down in the cool of the day and he said, Where art thou, Adam? He's looking for you. You're running from him in sin, but he's looking for you like the hound of heaven. He's on your scent. He's on your trail. He'll never forsake you. He's looking for you. And he said, Where art thou, Adam? And that's what I would say to you today. Where are you? You're doing drugs. Where are you? You're drinking. Where are you? You're in illicit affairs. Where are you? You're hooking up and cussing and watching porn and going to divorce court. Where are you, Adam? Wake up, Adam. And God came down and he showed them that fig leaves cannot wash away their sin, assuage their guilt, or get rid of their shame. And he showed them the way of blood sacrifice. Only the blood, Delway wrote it, only the blood, hallelujah, can save, Walt Mills sing it, can save a sinner's soul and set him free. There's no other power known to man, only the blood. The blood of the Lamb. The Bible said without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Peter speaks of the precious blood. The precious blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is power. Power. Wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? He saw nothing but leaves. Today, as Jesus sees the modern church and modern America, he doesn't see the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, goodness, gentleness, meekness, temperance that you read about in Galatians 5. No, he sees the fig leaves of religion. He, 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 you come to, the, to the, the threshing floor of Arun of the Jebusite. And, and it was sacrifice. It was, it was blood sacrifice. The only thing, the only thing, the only thing that can reconcile a sinful man with holy God is the holy shed blood of Jesus Christ. You can't pray to get righteous. You can't read the Bible or fast or give enough money to be righteous. It has to be by repentance and faith in the cross of Jesus Christ. He found nothing but leaves, and he cursed the tree. Organized religion is under the curse of Almighty God. And go down, go down, go down, go down to verse 21. Peter calling to him. Let's go, go to verse 20. It, this is not what I came to this pulpit to preach. This is totally by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. This is straight from heaven. In the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried from the roots. And Peter calling to remembrance said to them, Master, behold, the fig tree which you cursed is withered away. Religion is cursed by God. I said big religion is cursed 
by a big God. And that's why I don't respect your religion. Because it's cursed by God. God is not a respecter of persons. And God is not a respecter of religion. But today, we try to substitute leaves for fruit. And we're just like Adam. Walking around with our fig leaves on. So proud of it. Oh, look at my fig leaves. Are my fig leaves great? Look at my fig leaves. God doesn't like your fig leaves. God hates religion. As a matter of fact, religion is the first sin you have to repent of to have righteousness. Religion is the first sin that you have to repent of to have a relationship with God. Someone says, well, Brother Mike, I was born a Hindu. I was born a Buddhist. I was born a Jew. I was born a Catholic. I was born a Mormon. I was born a Muslim. It don't matter. You need to be born again. I don't care where you were born. I don't care who your parents are, what your heritage or legacy is. You need to give that up. Give that up because eternity is a long time and you need to think for yourself. Don't think of the way your mama thought or your daddy thought or your granddaddy or your pastor or imam. Don't think like that. Think for yourself. Don't be brainwashed by evil, satanic, demonic religion. Think for yourself and get saved and find Jesus Christ today. Today we substitute we substitute broken cisterns for the fountain of living waters. Financial prosperity, which is most of what my competitors, peers, and colleagues in the modern day pulpit, the mega churches, the media churches, mostly 90% what they preach, financial prosperity is not fruit. Are you listening to me? Financial prosperity is not fruit, it's a leaf. Full houses, running 30,000 in your church in Lakewood, Joel Osteen in Houston. That's not fruit. Having a full house out there in Saddleback, Rick Warren. Elevation, Stephen Furtick. Rhema Bible Church, Craig Hagen, Ken Hagen Jr. Family Worship Center, Jimmy Swaggart, Donnie Swaggart, Gabriel Swaggart, Francis Swaggart. That's, that's, that's leaves. That's not fruit. That's leaves. Full houses is not fruit. It's leaves. Flaunting the gifts of the Spirit is not fruit. It's leaves. You see all these preachers like Paul White and Benny Hinn. Benny Hinn blowing on people. Whoosh, whoosh. And having them fall. Ah, having them fall into the power. Ah! And Paul White and all these people flaunting the gifts of the Spirit and flaunting words of knowledge supposedly. That's not the fruit of the Spirit. It is the flesh. Flaunting gifts is not fruit. It's flesh. Full houses is not fruit. It's flesh. Financial prosperity is not fruit. It's flesh. Fancy faith confessions. It's not fruit. It's flesh. I am rich. That's what, what, did, what, did, what, did, what, did, what did Laodicea say in Revelation 3? I am rich. I am increased with goods. I have need of nothing. Well, what was Jesus' answer to their confession? He said, no, you are blind. You are blind. You are poor. You are dead. And you will be cast into tribulation. Doesn't matter what you confess. And speak in your great swelling words of vanity and arrogance and ambition. If your heart is not right with God, it's just fair speeches and good words. Swelling words of vanity. We got others. They think they got to get into the political arena and they got to fight. Oh, Jerry Falwell led us into politics. Pat Robertson. On a banana peel, he led us into politics. James Kennedy, he led us into politics. James Robinson, he led us into politics. Oh, we gotta, we gotta be Republicans and we gotta be conservatives and we gotta be for Trump. We gotta be for Trump and we gotta go into politics and we gotta fight in the flesh. How many of you know the Bible said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, are not carnal, are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Read it for yourself. Fighting in the flesh. Fighting the Democrats and fighting the liberals and fighting in the flesh. That's not fruit. That's flesh. The 
the religious right has become the religious wrong. The American dream has become the American nightmare. We don't even know our neighbor to love our neighbor in America. Formulas and religious form is not fruit. I said formulas and religious forms, rituals, rites, sacraments, liturgies. It's not fruit. It's flesh. He saw nothing but leaves. He saw nothing but leaves. You know, I get a tremendous amount of mail. I get a tremendous amount of mail from Roman Catholics. And I, I have a love and a concern and a burden for the Catholic people that's really off the charts, to be honest with you. I have a love for the Catholic people. God has given me a burden. A billion Catholics led by Pontifex, the Pope, the Holy Father, they call him, so-called. But Catholicism and Christianity are two separate things. They're not one and the same. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, ladies and gentlemen, Catholicism, Roman Catholicism, is not biblical Christianity, apostolic Christianity, at all. It is a false religion. It is leaves. It is the flesh. It is not fruit. It is full of tradition, but they have forsaken truth. It is full of tradition and rituals, but they have forsaken a relationship with God and righteousness. It is full of sacraments, but devoid of a Savior. They worship the former Virgin Mary when they should be worshiping the virgin-born Son of God, hallelujah, Jesus Christ, who is still a virgin. Instead of praying the rosary and rubbing the rosary beads, they should worship the rose of Sharon, who rose from the dead. Here's an old one. Catholic charities. Feeding the poor. Feeding the poor. Feeding the famished poor. Clothing the naked. As glorious and wonderful an activity as that is. Is not fruit. It's flesh. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13, Though I speak in the tongues of men and angels and have not agape, though I give my body to be burned, be a martyr, and have not agape, though I give all that I have to the poor and have not agape, I am nothing. And that's what God says today. You are nothing. Your church is nothing. Your denomination, Southern Baptist Convention, Assemblies of God, Methodist, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Episcopalian, is nothing. It's nothing. Non-denominational independence is nothing. He sees nothing but fruits because it's just works. It's the works of your hands. And not the righteousness of God. You can feed the hungry all day. It's not going to save anybody. You can clothe the naked all day. You can have homeless shelters and soup kitchens all day and all night. Jesus fed the 5,000, and then the very 5,000 he fed hung him on a tree and cursed him. The very ones who one moment were saying, Hosanna, bless
blessed is he who comes in the Lord. The next day, we're saying, crucify him, crucify him. You see, that doesn't save all the healings and gifts and miracles and signs and wonders that Jesus did. It didn't save him. Why? Because salvation is not by what you see. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 to 6, not seen, for we walk by faith and not and not by sight. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we are saved by hearing the word of God. Romans 10, 17, not by seeing, not by miracles. That's why Jesus said, blessed are you who don't see, but yet you believe. You see, fantastic cathedrals are not fruit, they are flesh. The world is full of beautiful churches, beautiful sanctuaries, beautiful temples, beautiful houses of worship. Religion is beautiful. But the hell it leads to is hideous. I could care less about the Mormon temple in Salt Lake. I could care less about the Sistine Chapel. As far as I'm concerned, they could tear it down. Like the Cathedral of Notre Dame. I, would, I wouldn't shed a tear. I'm not going to do it. Amen. God forbid. I don't believe in violence. But I didn't shed a tear when the Cathedral of Notre Dame burned. St. <laughs> Peter's Basilica. It's a basilica of blasphemy. The Taj Mahal, it's, a, it's blasphemy. Are you listening to me? All the shrines of Buddhism and Hinduism are abominations. No, no, no. All of your fantastic cathedrals are not fruit. They are flesh. He saw nothing but leaves. All these prosperity preachers in America conning money out of people with their building program. You gotta give thousands of dollars. You gotta tie to me so I can build a building. You wanna know Jesus' opinion of your building program, Pastor? Read Matthew 24. He came in. He saw the temple and you know what Jesus said of the Augusta, beautiful Herod's temple, Solomon's temple, any temple. Jesus said, not one stone shall be found on another. And in A.D. 70, the whole house of cards came crumbling down. In America, I speak as a prophet of God. Read Revelation 17 and 18. It says in one hour, the same thing that happened in A.D. 70 to Jerusalem. In one hour, in one hour, all the money, all the power, the skyscrapers, and the glory of America in one hour shall be made not. And it says it four times. Hear ye the word of the Lord. It's not going to get better. We're not going back to normal. We're not going to be COVID. Another one's coming. And another one's coming. And another one's coming. And another one bites the dust. Another one's gone. And another one's gone. Another one bites the dust. Hey, it's going to get you too. Another one bites the dust. 723,000 have died. Has America repented? Has America shown the fruits of repentance? No, she just has the fig leaves of religion which lead to an everlasting eternal burning hell. I didn't come to this pulpit to preach this today. Foolish fables and magical myths and mythology, fiction, fantasy, fairy tales are not fruit. But that's what fills our mega church and media electronic church pulpits today. Foolish fables, fiction, fantasy, fairy tales, lies. The gospel of prosperity is a lie. The gospel of politics is a lie. The gospel of positive confession and possibility and positive thinking is a lie. The purpose-driven gospel, the poll-driven popular gospel. These are lies. These are not fruits. They are not faith. They are flesh. Last point. Even fiery deaths are not fruit. I mentioned it a minute ago. If I give my body to be burned, 
and have not agape. I'm nothing. I won't take you back 20 years. 20 years, one month, and two or three weeks. I don't know when this is going to be released. So, And I was just there. I was just in New York at the 9-11 Memorial. I just made a video there. If you haven't seen it, please go back and look at my, my video from the 9-11 Memorial. And when I was there, I thought back to what motivated those young men to fly those planes into the Twin Towers. And their motivation, 99% of it was religion. They thought if they died as a martyr, then virgins awaited them in heaven. Nothing could be further from the truth. As a matter of fact, every one of the 9-11 hijackers is in hell today. I think back to a time which they call the Crusades and the supposed Christian church. There was nothing Christian about it. They went over to the Middle East and they mauled and they raided and they ransacked the Arab world and they killed them in the name of God. They called it Crusades. Not a one of the Crusaders was saved. Not a one of them was born again. You see, religion, especially Roman Catholicism, is controlled by the spirit of murder and power and control. It's a cult. Billy Graham never should have called his meetings crusades. It's an abomination. Shame on him. Shame on you, Franklin Graham, for supporting that. I think of Judaism. Their own Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. The one that the Hebrew prophets said would come. Instead of accepting him, they murdered him. They hung him on the cross. And they killed him. They conspired against him. That's what religion does. I think of the, the Dark Ages, the Spanish Inquisition, the Protestant Reformation had begun. God was pouring out his spirit of revival. And how did the Roman Catholic Church react? Did they accept the Reformation? Did they accept Luther and admit they were wrong and recant and admit they were in heresy? No. They attacked the Reformers and they killed Thousands and thousands of thousands of them burning them at the stake, quartering them in the name of God. You see, Paul said some people have a zeal for God, but it's not after knowledge. And that religion that you think is saving your soul that you were born into is actually damning your soul to hell. And you have to repent of that religion and get saved and get right with God. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I know today's message was not at all what I came into this pulpit to preach. But it's what God wanted to say. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Get on your knees. Unless you're driving a car, fall on your face. And if you're driving a car, get to a safe place and make that steering wheel an altar of prayer. Pull it over to the side of the road. And I want you to confess every sin. Say, God, forgive me. God, I repent. God, I'm sorry. Grab hold of the horns of the altar. Pray through to a breakthrough. Whatever sin he brings to your mind, say, God, forgive me of this. God, forgive me of that. Name your own sin. I can't pray for you. And I'm going to lead you in a prayer right now in my altar call called the sinner's prayer. And I want you to repeat it. Praying a sinner's prayer can't save you. But if, if you mean it, if you believe it, glory to God, it can. Hallelujah. So right now I want you to pray this and say, dear God in heaven. That's right. Repeat it. Dear God in heaven. I'm a sinner. Everybody on TikTok praying. I'm a sinner. I can't save myself. I deserve to go to hell. But I'm sorry for my sin. I turn around for my sin and I go the other way. Wash me in the blood of Jesus. Purify and cleanse me. Father, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me. I believe he was buried. I believe he's resurrected. And right now, Lord Jesus, I invite you to come into my heart. I accept you as my personal Savior. I receive you and make you the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name. Now, God, lead me, guide me, fill me, heal me, deliver me, baptize me in the Holy Ghost. I dedicate, consecrate, and commit every minute of every hour, of every month, of every year, the rest of my life to you. 
And Father, I say it in Jesus' name. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah! <laughs> And glory be to God. You see, a lot of y'all, you, uh, you students, college students, high school students, even young professionals, elementary school students, middle school students, you walk with a backpack every day. You walk with a backpack. But you know, you can't take a backpack to heaven. Heaven has no luggage racks. Heaven, heaven has no storage racks. You can't take it with you when you go. So right now, the only thing you have hallelujah, is Jesus Christ. And he, he has taken all that baggage, all that weight, all that Jesus said, Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and, and take my rest upon you, take my yoke upon you. He'll take your yoke, he'll take your burden, he'll take your bags, he'll take it away. Hallelujah, he'll take it away, and you'll be free with liberty. Hallelujah, you will be free. Woo, glory to God. And right now, you're free and there's nothing separating you and God. So it's a good time to pray for your healing. I said, it's a good time. It's a good time. It's a good time. It's a good time. It's a good time to pray for your healing right now in the name of Jesus. And I want you to gather all your friends, your family, your followers around I want you to share this TikTok with all your friends, family, and followers. Share this TikTok all over the world. Make it go viral. Make it trend. Make it get hits. Make it get views. Make Evangelist Mike Dial have a million followers. Not to the glory of Evangelist Mike Dial. God forbid. God forbid. I mean nothing. I mean nothing. My name is nothing. My name is nothing. My name is nothing. But to the glory of Jesus Christ. To the praise of the glory of His grace. Hallelujah. And now. I stretch my hand out to you and I lay hands on you in Jesus' name spiritually according to the Word of God. Mark chapter 16. I lay hands on you and I say, Be healed. Receive your healing. Hallelujah. And there it is. I'm praying in the Spirit. And there's the river of God. God let your river flow. God let your river flow. God let your river flow to overflowing. Let it flow to overflowing from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Make him a new man. Make him a new woman. Make him a new teenager. Make him a new boy and a new girl. In the name of Jesus. God says, I'm here. God says, I'm the Lord that heals you. Do you want the interpretation? God says, I'm the Lord that heals you. Reach out to me right now. Believe me right now. Claim my word and stand on my word right now, says the Lord. In obedience to the Lord, James chapter 5. Spiritually, I anoint you with oil in the name of the Lord. And the Bible says the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise them up. Mark 16, you lay hands on the sick and they shall recover, not they might. So right now in Jesus' name, I rebuke cancer. I rebuke COVID-19. I rebuke coronavirus, Delta variant. I rebuke brain disease, sugar diabetes, hypertension, and every other sickness and disease. And I command you to come out from the people. <laughs> in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And right now I do spiritual warfare. And I cast out every spirit of infirmity, every spirit of fear, and every spirit of religion from you. Go! Back to where you came from. In the name of Jesus Christ. And by the authority of the blood of the Lamb, I break the power of pornography. Hallelujah. I break the power of gluttony. I break the power of lying and cheating. In color and pharmacia and, and prescription drugs and drinking. Glory to God and cigarettes and whatever else binds you. I say to you, be free right now. Hallelujah. There it is. Receive it in Jesus' mighty name. And for those of you who are hungry for the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the initial physical evidence of speaking with the tongues right now, the Lord simply says, receive it. It's done. Heal that tongue right now. The Bible says they spoke in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. He will give you the prayer language. Open your mouth by faith right now and speak that which He gives you. He won't speak for you. You do the speaking by faith. Right now, lift your hands. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. I lay hands on you right now and 
I say receive, ye be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Now speak what he gives you. Glory to God. God, we bless you in the Spirit. We give thanks in the Spirit. We glorify you in the Spirit. Glory, 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 glory to God. Y'all keep praying. Whew, I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. Y'all keep praying. Um, pastors, I want to preach messages just like this in your pulpits all over the United States and around the world. I'm, I'm not going to beat around the bush. You have not because you ask not. I want to fill your pulpit for Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, week-long revival, camp meetings, conferences, conventions, corporate outings. Contact me 24-7. Text first, if you can, 703-405-1942. 703-405-1942. And we can schedule revival. Hallelujah. Please, I, I, I'm not coming to get money from you. I'm not even taking an offering. I just want to come bless your people. I'm not calling to, coming to sell products. I have nothing for sale. Neither does God. I just want to bless you and your people. Last thing I'm going to say today, I'm the only... Uh, a uh, preacher in America with any size audience at all who never asks for, begs for, pleads for money. I don't promise people that do obey God and give to me that you'll get a blessing or favor, increase harvest. That's between you and God. All I say is if God leads you to give, to help us win souls, obey him. You don't want to disobey him, obey him. And the way we receive offerings is through my Venmo. It's one word, evangelist, Mike Dial, all together, one word. Evangelist Mike Dial, capitalize the E for evangelist, the M for Mike, the D for Dial. And that's all I'm going to say about that. I love y'all. Thank you for listening today. God bless you, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. And until then, remember, Jesus is still your answer. Amen and amen.